God bless my haters. God bless fake hoes. God bless these haters. Cause God don't need no bad. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. All I. Wow. I'm feeling our new theme song, or our temporary theme song, excuse me. <laughs> God bless your haters. God bless my haters. <laughs> we all have them. We but sure thank do. you guys so much. Thank you for joining us. We are here on our first ever LDM broadcast of the comment section. So we are excited. Happy to be here. Happy, Happy to be here. Um, it's been a long, hard road, you know, finding a network that we gel with, that we mesh with. But so far, we are excited. We've been treated you know, pretty pretty good here, right? I, I'd say so, right? I am Shirley Phillips, your host, and this is... Happy dinner. Emmanuel Angeles, a.k.a. Fox Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. Fo I call him Foxy, because he's Foxy. But we are just, you know, we're trying to spread awareness about issues concerning black and brown people. Not that we don't care about other colors of people, but that's our primary focus, and if you were watching last week, you saw us on the House of Karma, where we just gave a brief introduction into what it is we're trying to do. But today, we felt rather than you know our normal um, set, we felt like we would just give you an introduction into who we are, what it is we're trying to do, so that you can know what to expect each and every week. Um, again, my name is Shirley Phillips. I am a teacher. I run a nonprofit by the name of Go Girls Inc., I'm catering to at risk girls. Um, my co-host here, <coughs> he's very modest, so I'm going to introduce <laughs> him myself. His name is Emmanuel Anzules, and he is the former Mr. United States, um, 2017. 2017. I'll let him tell you the rest about himself. I am also an educator. I teach at a high school in the South Bronx, so I'm excited to bring my perspective from the high school education background, but also from my time as a title holder for the Mr. United States organization. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. My name is Matthew Dennis. I'm also a educator, also a an uh, educator. An edu Thank That's you, English teacher. I said a. You said a. No, no, no. I said I said whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a social studies teacher, so we don't have to worry about all that <laughs> grammatical stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, grammar is important. Um, but I'm also a history teacher. Um, I'm a politics junkie. As I was just telling my co-hosts, I feel like they stabbed me in the back. They don't watch Game of Thrones. Excuse me. I'm a Game of Thrones nerd. <laughs> I love it. It's the greatest show on TV, and I cannot wait to watch that episode tonight. <sighs> okay. I, 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 unfortunately, have never watched one single episode so of Game of Thrones. I belong to the 1% who wow. doesn't really care. Uh, about a bunch of white people and dragons and no, stuff. No, I, like, no, I can't. There's, there are black people. There are black people in Game of Thrones? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It got a little racist two episodes ago. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Oh, sorry. I don't watch it either, and I'm not interested in watching it. not interested. I, I have other preoccupations, and Game of Thrones is not on my priority Thank list. You. I don't know. It should be. Should, be. should I try to tune in tonight? No, nah. no, 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 no. You can't. You got to watch it. Just watch it from the beginning. one, yeah, season one. I don't know. It just reminds me like in the 80s, the weird kids that used to watch, like, play Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons no, no. and Dragons. Those, those yes. are the ones that be bombing stop. people's schools up and no, stuff. No, <laughs> no, it's not, that's not what this is. That's it's not what this is? It's a whole world of, of uh, think, think about Game of Thrones as different houses trying to come together to fight one common enemy. Just kind of like life. It's a good <laughs> analysis of life. Hard imitating we're all, life. We're all okay. fighting each other, different races sometimes. Uh -huh. We're making money. And wow, man, the you, real convinced. Enemy, yeah. you convinced me. The real enemy is the <laughs> rich, white, you. rich white people. Rich white Just people? Kidding. But rich people in general. <laughs> rich white people That's in general. Okay. Speaking of rich white people, <clears throat> <laughs> our topic today is actually... <laughs> We're talking about color. We're talking about discrimination. We're talking about the layers and the levels that there are to discrimination because it is not just black and white. Mm -hmm. um, as I experienced the other day, the racism is still very much real. Um, I was called the N-word <coughs> about three blocks from my house in Westchester. And I wasn't really surprised. I was more so taken aback at how blatant and how angry this person was who never met me, you know, had only exchanged four or five words with me, and said the N word with such conviction, like she she meant that like, to her soul. She's so been practicing. she's been practicing, and it's like she was waiting, like she waited her whole life for the opportunity to call um, a black woman the N word. And 
you know, it kind of funneled the discussion that we plan to have today about where this discrimination and just this innate hatred comes from um, on different levels, not just racism. There's colorism, there's ageism, there's sexism, there's, um, what's the other word I'm looking for? Heterosexism. <sighs> all, well, all, the all the isms. All the isms. All the isms. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's getting to be a little much for me. Like, I feel like we're reverting back to, like, the Jim Crow South. Oh, no, no, like, no, we're not. I don't, I don't even. Yeah. 19, Maybe. I don't. <laughs> Listen, they, <laughs> if I start, <laughs> If I start seeing uh, separate bathrooms and oh, no, no, someone no. trying to tell me to go sit in the back of the bus. Oh, no, no. I mean, I don't take the bus. But my point <laughs> is, just saying, but my point is, no, I, I, I certainly hope not. But people are bolder now. It's, people are bold Trump's America. out here. I America think that's now. what it is, yeah. yeah people are I, I blame him for giving mm. them the courage. So this conversation is going to be amazing. I think so. It's going to be so good and rich. I think so. <laughs> Before we get to talking about that, though, I have some current events to talk to you guys uh, about. Yes. Let's keep the conversation lighthearted and entertainment-based for the Thank first few sir. minutes, at least. No problem. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that for the first time in history, the major United States pageants that are all televised are have titled a, an African-American yes. woman really? for the year. Yeah, so you have, Miss America. you have Miss America, who was crowned in September. Then you have Miss Teen USA, who was crowned... Mm -hmm. The last past weekend, mm -hmm. and you have Miss USA, USA mm -hmm. who is a 20 year old attorney That's from right. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miss USA yep. made up, she rounds out the trinity of Perfect. these African American Perfect. women who are extremely outspoken and beautiful and mm -hmm. educated and have so much to share mm -hmm. with the country. So, and they're not twerking, you know, for, for dollars. They're yes, out here doing something. Yes, they are you know, amazing role models yep. for our teen community for our women and they're all so strong and I'm excited to see what it is that they do throughout their With reign. Their crown. Absolutely. Yep. Does so that make you have like a little wanderlust to want to go back to <laughs> pageantry? I <laughs> don't want to go back into pageantry. Why? I make I may coach. I feel like I need to be coaching people <laughs> to get on the stage. <laughs> to <wear> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know that it is pageantry for me anymore. Really? I've, I've also like for a long time felt that I've aged out. I am going to be 34 this year, and usually you're in your prime when you're in your mid to late 20s That's for I most pageants. Before, okay. Right, but, you know, I think that I will stick to journalism and perhaps coaching, <laughs> life coaching, <laughs> coaching pageant people. So we'll see where it goes from there. The second <laughs> thing I wanted to bring to you guys was, did you see the Billboard Music Awards last Wednesday? I heard about it. So, I saw about as much of it as I could stomach, and then I changed the yeah. channel. Yeah, so Taylor Swift's performance was very reminiscent of Beyonce's Coachella performance. Oh. She had an entire drum line, a whistleblower, the and guitar. came out with her hands on her hips. Mm -hmm. Very Beyonce-like. How do you guys feel about that? I think they dubbed it Mayo Cella. <coughs> um, yeah. so very so white. Mayo Cella, as in anise, like white. Oh, wow. um, I think it was very deliberate, what she did, and... I, I mean, I don't know if she was trying to pay homage to homage to Beyonce or if she hmm. was just like, hey, I can do this better because I'm Taylor Swift. I don't know, but I just felt it was bad timing. No, we did not invent marching bands and be free <laughs> to, you know, use a march. I just think that yeah. the fact that Homecoming has been so monumental. I think that that's the rebuttal <laughs> that Taylor Swift's fans are bringing. They're saying that Beyonce didn't invent marching bands. She didn't invent a drum line, right? No. But I think that... To Beyonce's credit, she made out of a drum line something so iconic, mm -hmm. and she brought it back to African American history, especially at HBCUs. So, very bad timing on behalf of Taylor Swift. Listen, we, we might not have invented the drum line, right? But we definitely made it better than like everything <laughs> else, right? Oh, absolutely. And you definitely Agreed. stole. I mean, but listen, man, they've been stealing things from us for forever, right? Do rags, cornrows, mm -hmm. braids. Food, food, food. I mean, think about how many restaurants, Swan even bread. yeah, like in Harlem, right? Most of those African American <laughs> restaurants, soul Listen. food places, are owned by They're these owned white people. By white people. Mm, it's very bizarre. Owned by white people. Yeah. Very bizarre. And it's not. We have nothing. I love white people. Right. Okay, and I know it I sounds really racist, but I have several <laughs> friends that are white. That's not what we're saying That's here. What it sounds. Huh? That sounds, that sounds racist. Okay. Know, like racist people say that is. <sighs> I was gonna say the same thing, but I stopped myself. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We have nothing against white people per se. Of course not. 
it's what has been done to black people, and it just so happens that the majority of the offenses have been committed by white people. Right. So you got to look at them with a side eye. Outside eye. You know, like you just never know what their intentions are. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they're going to take something from you. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's definitely something to watch out for. Yeah. It's appropriation. appropriation. Yeah. And I'm personally tired of it. Like I... Like, I don't even want people to watch me teach, to be honest. Because <laughs> I'm like, what close, are they going to take? <laughs> like, I don't want to see, I don't want to have them see me interact uh, with students because they might take that from me the way that I, <laughs> like, jive with my kids. I don't I don't want anybody that's white to see me in action. Hey, I, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> I'm sorry. Kind of unrelated, but do you remember the episode of Good Time <clears throat> where they took in the little, like, his parents were, like, beating him or something, and he came to the Evans household he wouldn't take off his coat. He wouldn't take off his backpack because he's just like mm. felt like somebody was going to take something from him. Mm. And she's like, nobody's going to steal anything from you. With that <laughs> That's how we feel. Like we can't have anything to ourselves. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. So unfortunate. I mean, and that's because, you know, black and brown people are the culture of this country. Like we drive the culture. What we of course. put out there drives the culture of this country. So, yes. I mean, when you don't have that like creative talent, look at what we're doing and then kind of you know, And take it. it. Yeah. Because, I mean, for example, right? Again, I think I made a point about the drum line. We didn't invent it, but the HBCU marching bands, that style, that yeah. is all us, right? Mm -hmm. When I was at the University of Kentucky, I went to a football game. We played uh, Norfolk State, mm -hmm. right? Now, Kentucky's band came on there. It was like... Doom, 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 very doom, traditional. Very, very... Mm -hmm. No flavor. State down there. No yeah. flavor. Look. Yeah. It was... They turned da, it. Da, da, they had to turn da, it up. Da, da, da. Yeah. And even yeah. the white folks in the stand was like... Yeah. <laughs> Why well, can't Kentucky? Yeah, it's like a totally, it's a but flavor, it's right? Different. You know, white man dance versus a black man dance. Even not saying that all black men dance, because not all of them do. I don't. But we know that, Matt. But <laughs> for the most part, right, our men, our women, they, listen, they bring it. Mm -hmm. They do. And these white mm -hmm. marching bands, they, uh, they don't. Right. So Taylor Swift was probably like looking for something to do. She had no inspiration. And yeah. last minute, she was like, oh my God, I saw... Yeah. The Beyonce documentary. Yeah. Do the same thing. So now I want to do something similar. And, and I have no issues with that. Right. A Adele is very good for giving credit to Beyonce. Like she says she gets a lot of her inspiration from her. Right. I just watched an interview with New Kids on the Block. And the interviewer was trying to steer the interview like, oh, you know, how does it feel to be the first boy band? And Donnie Wahlberg was like, no, excuse me. That title belongs to New Edition. Like he's very mm. clear. Like, no, we came after them. We owe you know, everything that we have to them. Right. So I don't mind you guys borrowing things as long as you give credit where credit is due. Exactly. Of course. That's the only thing that I'm saying. So and if you're going to pay homage to someone, don't do it within a month of... <laughs> it was I, days, sir. Yeah, it's like it hasn't <laughs> even been... That was like Or three weeks, right? Yeah. It's ridiculous it's that days. it happened so quickly after. And like, our yeah. team is also responsible for... Did, who signed off on this? Yeah, like <laughs> Taylor is probably just showing up to rehearsals and she is down for the idea, but her team needs to be... I don't want to say they need to be held accountable, but if this one goes down in flames, that it needs to be is. them. But it's, I mean, it's also there. about the privilege, right? If you don't have a person of color in the room, then stuff like that's going to happen. I think um, a couple of weeks ago, there's a controversy over Ancestry.com uh, having a commercial where they have a slave woman, it's, you know, then slavery, right? Mm -hmm. It's a black woman and a white guy, and they're meeting up behind the alley. He's like, I wish you were free. We're going to run away the freedom uh -huh. and all that stuff, like oh, making it seem like, oh, this is this a on love TV? story. Yes, yes. And they pull it down after a day because people are like, wait, you think that's disgusting. the interracial relationship between a white male and a black woman, the a slave, rape of a black slave, and doing slavery <laughs> oh, was romantic? Man. And oh, I wish you were free so we could no, stay together. No, I saw it. And I'm wow. like, what the, what the hell? You saw the actual mm. commercial? Yeah, I saw it. It's online. They pulled it down. But again, wow. that's what happens when you don't have black and brown face in the room because wow. we would have been like, damn, that was great. Wow. That's not. Yeah. Like, mm. And that's the problem. <sighs> Remember that H&M, like, product monkey. they were selling? Mm -hmm. It was, like, coolest mm -hmm. monkey on the mm -hmm. playground or you think that was in deliberate? the jungle or something. I don't know, but I, I kind of feel wow. like they didn't have somebody black that right. was there telling them that that was not okay. That, I, don't, not okay. I don't think it was deliberate. A lot of the stuff that's happening, right? No. I let, me, let me take that back. back Some of the stuff is deliberate. But that part, I don't think it's deliberate. It was just, listen, when you have a bunch of people in of one color in a room and they're making a decision, um, those mistakes happen. It's obvious to us, right, because we grew up in the culture, right? Yeah. But, 
you know, to people that haven't grown up in our culture. They're they thinking, oh, better. that's fine. They could put a, yep. a, a monkey shirt on a black boy, you know, and you're forgetting that's your privilege, forgetting yeah. that, hey, back in the day, we are, you know, black and brown people have been yeah. associated with the monkey room. And you a know? lot of it is ignorance. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just don't Absolutely. know, you know. Um, I actually have a different perspective, mm -hmm. which kind of left me in my feelings a little bit. Sure. But, you know, I just got back from Africa visiting my dad. And <clears throat> Africans want no part of the American, <laughs> African American struggle. They don't want us to call ourselves African American. They get very wow. offended. Wow. They said, You are American, ma'am. So, like, the right. only way that I was able to navigate those, you know, Nigerian streets was because my dad had to co sign, like, This is my daughter. She's good. Leave her Leave alone. Leave her alone. She can come to the barbecue. Like, it's okay. They don't want it. They, they want no. Damn. Parts. So, if we get all African Americans to go back to Africa. <sighs> Where are they going to go? They're not Africans welcome. don't want y'all. They don't want us. Well, they don't want us as we are presenting ourselves if, if, in America. If I, if I may put a historical context on this, go right? Uh, in their defense, like, we tried that, right? Liberia. <laughs> the <laughs> Africans, you know, the former slaves went to the, <laughs> what, created Liberia and all that other <clears> stuff, <throat> right? Mm -hmm. And then they enslaved the Africans that were there. I mean, it was crazy. It was and they're still dealing with the repercussions. They're still dealing with that. Crap, right? Yeah. But with that being said, listen, if I go to Africa, you know, God won't I go to Africa. You better not tell me I'm not African. You said what now? They what? are nah. very particular. Nah. Mm -hmm. And they spot you right away. Like, even before you open your mouth and they hear that you don't have the accent, they can spot you out. Well, well we are all a part of the, the diaspora, right? right? And, you know, I can respect <laughs> your part of the diaspora. You're from Africa, right? And, you know, I am African American and Caribbean American, right? So... If you don't understand that, then you as ignorant as the racist white people over here. Great conversation. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to take a short commercial break, but we will be right back with the comment section.
Wow. I, I can't get over that. We're actually, we're back with the comments section, but some of the conversations that we have on break are like mind boggling. Mm -hmm. And we were just referring to a gentleman who, he said this is a white man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who raped and falsely, falsely imprisoned a woman in a dog cage mm -hmm. for 10 years? His name is wow. Michael Wolosowski, Wolosowski, however you, however you pronounce it, but it was for a year. He raped the <sighs> girl, put her in a dog cage, made her bed for food, made her do sexual oh acts to God. him to get food. Yeah, kidnapped her and everything. Um, ten years probation. He got ten years probation. Wow. Ten years probation. This is That's a white person. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I have. I'm speechless. I like. I. But this is my point, though. Like, it's what? there's discrimination with mm -hmm. punishment, yep. with color, everything, with everything. Even in the education system, teachers discriminate against teachers based on color. Yeah. Um. It's. It's out of control. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem is that this was the way that our country was founded. You know, so like it's so deep rooted. Like, how do you escape it? It's in every part of society. It's in everything you do. Like the lens mm. as teachers, mm -hmm. the lens that we're observed under is a very white lens. You mm -hmm. know what's funny? Um, I saw this on Instagram like maybe five minutes before we got on, on air. Um, Don Cheeto was on the. LeBron James' new show on HBO, The, the Barbershop, and mm -hmm. he said that uh, America's birth defect is racism, right? Oof, it's been wow. There. I'm like, that, but Deep. it's the truth because it is systemic in every yeah. part of our society. There is no way you have white police officers getting off of killing, right, innocent black and brown young men, but then you have in Milwaukee, black man, police officer shoots and kills a white, a white boy, right? And of course, you don't you don't want that to happen, right? He got sentenced to twenty years, twenty years. Wow. But all these other white officers aren't. Like, what's going What's going on here? It's crazy. So, it's crazy. do you think that the basis is just is it fear, or is it ignorance that primarily makes someone discriminate for no reason? No, basically. it's about wanting to keep power, right? It's wanting to keep the it's power supremacy. that your racist ancestors built this country on. Well, had us build this country your on. Power and your right? privileges, right? Your right. Power, you why keep why would you want to give that away? Well, that's what people are fearful, right? Of course. And and that's what Donald Trump spoke to. Remember, make America great again. But who was it great for? White back people. Then, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't great for us. No. I'm not going to time It's machine never been great for us. Yeah, no. I'm not going to the time machine. Oh, let me go see the Civil War or the American Revolution. It's never been no. great for us. No, never. Mm -mm. But then it kind of speaks to the, the potential of the oppressed because mm -hmm. if you are that fearful that I'm going to be able to usurp right. this power, mm -hmm. then you know how powerful I am. Mm -hmm. if, if my cat has no power and is useless and I'm not concerned, why would I go through or go to such extremes to oppress my cat? I, if I know the power of my cat and I'm fearful of the power of my cat, then I'm going to go to these extremes <laughs> to keep my cat <laughs> subdued. But that Does speaks it, you understand volumes, what I'm right? saying? It speaks volumes to what you know about us as people of color. It speaks volumes, too, because, like, they know what our people are capable of. Exactly. In every aspect of society. They know that we are talented. They know that we're intelligent. We've, we've broken records in every field possible, academic, entertainment, athletics. And so that threatens their privilege. It threatens their superiority, their their entire system will be broken up well, if mm -hmm. we step into this position of power. And then, I mean, you know, you talk to, to you know, white people that are racist and, and you know, don't like people of color for some odd reason. It, there, there is a reason. They see us coming, right? In about, what, 20, 25 years, America is going to be a majority minority nation. Yeah. Right? It's a wrap. Huh. It's a wrap. The I already up. feel you know, it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, the election of Donald Trump was like the last hurrah, right? of just outward white racism because you know you didn't see it back then only when barack obama became president everyone's like oh post-racist society no nah, not post-racist that's that underbelly of american racism has, has always been there for us we've always seen it now the rest of you guys are they predicted that that would happen though oh, yeah. they predicted that after barack obama's eight years mm -hmm. yeah. it would turn into this white supremacy kind of america and it 
I never expected it to show up in this way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never expected it to manifest in the ugly way that mm-hmm. it has been manifesting in, especially now with social media. Mm-hmm. You can't miss it. Yeah. You know, and it's it's very scary. And I'm kind of scared for the election of 2020 because I do feel like Trump will be elected again. I am. We actually have a comment coming from <coughs> Facebook. And Carmen says they're looking out for their own, which is something that we should do more of. And I mm. totally agree. And that, that was my next point is, yes, we know the obvious issues with white people, racist white people. Mm. But what about the discrimination and the prejudice that we experience amongst our own people? Mm. Our own black and brown people sometimes can be worse than white people. Right. Well, well, the thing about that is why this, right? I, I feel like that goes down the conversation of you know what white people use all the time, but we use it too. Well, you know we can't worry about you know white people when we do you know black on black crime is so bad. That's such a myth. It's not even funny, right? What's a myth? I do not believe in black and black crime. That's not a. That's like that's not a thing. That's mm. not a thing. Matt, here's say, why, more, say more about Here's that. why that's not a thing. Let me explain, right? Of course, America's so segregated, we all live in predominantly black neighborhoods, predominantly right. Hispanic neighborhoods, predominantly white neighborhoods, right? And according to the Uniform Crime Report, the FBI runs the Uniform Crime Report. It takes all statistics from each police station every year, right? Mm-hmm. So black and black crime is 84%, right? You have a chance, if you're a black American in this country, you have an 84% chance of having a crime committed to, uh, on you by another black person. But guess what? With Hispanic people, 85%. With white people, it's 86%. All right. Why? Because Communities you live segregated. in so many, so yeah. much segregated areas. Right. Of course, the chance of you having a crime <coughs> committed uh, on you. Because there's exactly. exactly. So that's why I say black I on see. black crime is a myth. That, that's what I mean by that. I have a whole Got shirt it. that says that as well. That does yeah. make sense. Mm-hmm. And just like, you know, with sexual assault, <coughs> right? The chances of you being sexually assaulted by a family member is... It skyrockets. Skyrockets. Exactly. 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 I see the parallel again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it, yeah, that election I is mm-hmm. looking like a no. <laughs> and sometimes like, I feel like a pessimist for thinking that way, but I feel like reality <sighs> is He's that... He's going to get elected again. You watch and see. I don't or it's going to be so I narrow. Think, yeah. If he loses, it's going to be so narrow. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. And God bless the prophet. No! <laughs> <laughs> he is going to pitch a you-know-what, mm-hmm. and he's going to say, nope, you guys used illegal practices. He's not leaving that White House without a no, fight. Nancy Pelosi, the... Uh, Temper tantrum. She just talked about this yesterday. Like, Listen, if, if you don't beat him, and beat him like, like whoop him, right? Yeah. What happens? What happens if he gets on TV nope. like, yo, I'm not, I'm not. He's I'm not, not doing leaving. it. And it's, it's not, Matt is going to be his followers. I feel like there's a civil war. There's a civil, a race war. And if he, like, this civil war is going to be beyond anything that we're Listen, even capable of imagining, happening. right? What is going to happen amongst his, like, populace when he doesn't get elected mm-hmm. and somebody else does who they with well mm-hmm. you know what if that if, god forbid that happens i i am praying and prayerful that if he does get beat and beat by a slim margin um that our government kicks in and works as it has since well the last time you know the union broke apart the civil war right yeah so <laughs> i'm i'm prayerful that it, it you know he is taking our power you know and it's a peaceful transition because if it's if it's not but um, he's not peaceful. Be. And he knows exactly what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And even, I mean, I don't know mm-hmm. why, I'm still confused as to why he hasn't been impeached yet. Um, nobody can answer the question for <laughs> me, but Mike Pence is the one we need to be worried about. Yeah, he's worse. He's ten times worse than Trump in terms of yeah! <laughs> mm-hmm. wretched and hatred. <laughs> like, it's I, out yeah. of control. I just say you keep that until 2020. You don't want Mike Pence. That's not. You don't want Mike Pence. Yeah. You don't want was, that. Yeah, when I was uh, a student at the University of Kentucky, Mike Pence was the governor of Indiana. Oh my God. The laws he passed. Yeah. yeah. No, no. That's, like you want to talk Hitler. about make America great again, like 1940s values, Birth so on and so forth? No, nah, you, you don't want that. Yeah. <sighs> Who do you think is the best candidate? that are interested in running and I feel like because so many of them the vote is divided right 
you know, and the problem with Democrats is that we don't get our person to come into. Thank you, thank you. So when we don't get our person as Democrats. Our person doesn't get elected. Our person doesn't make the first cut. Yeah. We decide to completely back out yeah. and not support the person that is running, right? And that's what happened in 2016 with Bernie and Hillary. Right. <laughs> Those Bernie supporters did not vote for Hillary. Not only that, there but there's refused. a lot of secret right. closet Trump supporters, too. And first of all, I don't like Bernie Scary. Sanders. I don't like Bernie supporters. Me I'm either. so sorry. I don't either. You guys lost us the election. I got it. Like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to do a, what was it, a, a protest vote. You better not do that this time. Yeah. And now that Bernie's winning again, I'm still not going to vote for him because he had a hard time connecting with mm -hmm. the black and brown community. Mm -hmm. A lot of his uh, supporters were very, you know, white and liberal, yeah. something, but they talked down to us. Right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, your schools are underfunded. Oh, no, it's not your fault. You can't really take anything. Mm -hmm. You know, no, we've been going through a lot of stuff. We could walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, Where yeah. are the reparations? Well, and no one can answer this question. Well, here, here's my thing. Here's good my luck answer. with Trump doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck. They can just um, pay off my student loans. That'd be here, nice. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. So you need um, Elizabeth Warren. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can call it even. Think, just pay off my student loans. I think the person that can beat him hasn't announced yet, and she will soon. Who? Her name is Stacey Abrams. Oh, my think God. So? Oh, yeah. Love her. Yeah, I love yeah. her, but do you think she's going to beat him? I'm put this way, right? You she think so, came, Matt? She came within think a it. half a percentage point of being governor. Turning that state blue. Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem Georgia. is, yeah. man, that same? now she has to she has to do that same thing on a nationwide basis, right? She has to turn mm -hmm. those red states blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's a black woman to do that. Our country on the totem pole, mm -hmm. black women are at the bottom of that. We're at the top, but we're at the bottom. We're the most Amazing, educated group. Strong. Gotcha. Okay. Most educated group. Sure. Yes. Uh, okay. But we're at the bottom. <laughs> the most oppressed. The most oppressed, Here, but the most here, Here's my thing. Here's the most why successful talent. and most Yeah, talented. of course. Here's why I think she can do it. Georgia's a deep south, right? Mm -hmm. And coming from, you know, the south, half my family lives in South Carolina. My south family south, right? lives in Kentucky. Listen. My family lives in the south, too, in Lima, Peru. <laughs> Talk about south. the south. <laughs> south, south. South, the south, 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 south. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, any 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 candidate that can do what she did running for governor in Georgia, yeah, um, and her opponent now, who's governor now, he was the attorney general, right? So he and was the one that was he was the, in charge of the polling station. Yes, polling he was stations. turning <sighs> people away. He turning was canceling people people's registrations. Yeah, he canceled a million voters' registrations. Yeah. It's crazy. So he had to cheat to win. So my thing is, that's if she can do that in Georgia, it might not work in Mississippi or Alabama or Louisiana and so on and so forth. But forget about those states. You need to win the Midwest. Florida. Yeah. You need to win the Midwest. Yeah. You need to win Ohio. You need to win Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. The West Coast, we got that. I right? see. But you could win Virginia, North Carolina. Yeah. These are states that Obama has won. He's already put the blueprint yeah. out there, right? And yeah. I really feel what she can do it. Win. Now that you mention it, yeah, I, I did read an mm -hmm. article that said that Biden. Right, if he were to run for mm. president, his best bet at winning would mm. be to have Stacey Abrams as his running mate. Well, he, he, here's the thing in that, right? I was for Biden, I love Uncle Joe, that was mm. that's my role dog. But then I started doing my own research, right? I just yeah. don't want another old white man, I don't man. want an old yeah, white well, man, well, and I just that. feel like it's smoke and mirrors. His, I just, I can't. his policies before are kind of problematic. He reminds right? me of a game show, he was he sponsored the 94 crime bill that had the three strike out, yeah, which, right. Whew, devastated the black and brown mm -hmm. community, right? Um, and then what people uh, forget was the uh, Supreme Court nomination of Clarence Thomas, right? Where oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Anita Hill yeah. was chair of that committee that interviewed her, right? Yeah. And they actually met up a couple weeks ago. Anita Hill they was did. like... He apologized, nah, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. He did not apologize. She said, I wouldn't, she said, I will not characterize what he said yeah. as a apology, huh. right? I don't think if Joe Biden runs, yes, he would need Stacey Abrams, but I'm hoping that, well, Joe Biden's not going to be vice president again, um, but I am Right, his only, his only way of getting there is as president. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be vice mm -hmm. president. I mean, but he's, isn't he leading the polls right now? I mean, yeah, he is right now, but so is Hillary. Right now. Will we ever get a woman president? I would love one. Like, I, I would really love time. one. And I think, mm -hmm. I, I actually, now that you mentioned it, Stacey Abrams is mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yeah. Talented, right. phenomenal. Um, another comment we have from oh, Facebook. What, what about a Native American? Some, some mm. 
Interesting. A Native American as president or as president? As president? president. Here's my thing with that. That's fine. I <laughs> well, the closest thing yeah. is Elizabeth Warren, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> So that, there you go, Elizabeth uh, Warren. There you go. <laughs> Free college tuition, college tuition. and Native American you know while listen, she's at it. To give my loans, Elizabeth Warren, I will. I will listen. campaign for you. Rain, exactly. sleep, yeah. snow, Me hurricane. Too. That would be go. major. That would be major. No, it's a serious. It's, it's a problem. Yeah. It is a problem. Mm -hmm. It is a major. People are drowning in student loan debt. Don't they say that it would actually help the economy if the they economy. just repay everybody's loans it's on their a, behalf? It's about to be a crisis, and you know what? I saw it a is meme. a crisis already. I saw a, yeah, it is a crisis. I saw a meme that um had I don't know if you guys saw this on Instagram or Facebook too, where you had a person here <laughs> building a wall that said, "Oh, Trump said he'll forgive all your student loans if you build a wall." And, you build, and we and I looked at it and I laughed. <laughs> I thought, mm, maybe, but my morals though, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't do it. know. So I, like, ah, I don't know. Nah. Those payments. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. Ooh. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But like I was saying, I with know. with. I have no words. I have to think. I, have about, no I would have to think about it. But it wouldn't be a fast no. <laughs> but you know what it is? I think. You know, a lot of people uh, voted for Trump. Um, a lot of white people, because not not all the people that voted for him are racist. I, I will I will give them that. Mm -hmm. um, I think they voted for him um, because of jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Think about all the people that lost their coal mining jobs, their yeah. factory jobs. You yeah. talk about the Midwest. That's where he. That's won, the yeah. Right. Yeah. Like the Democrats lost Pennsylvania, yeah. Ohio. That's the Rust Belt, right? She didn't campaign in those states. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, she they thought they were problem. secured. Yeah. And so that's that's where she. I mean, that's one of the reasons why she lost the election. You know, the other yeah. thing is like the whole Russia. Yeah. Right. You know. And you know the the, <coughs> the you know I'm gonna. Game of Thrones references. Oh, please don't, don't. please don't, man. Not to bring it. No, no, we don't watch no, the wait, damn wait, show. No, 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 but you're going to get it. Watch, watch, oh, watch. Man. So remember, Game of Thrones is about a whole bunch of different houses that fight each other and, and all dragons. the other stuff, right? But and dungeons. And dragons. But look, 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 look. So they fight each other, right? But they forget there's one common enemy that doesn't care what house they're from, mm -hmm. who they are. It's like, yo, I'm going to kill you because you're breathing, right? So for the Democrats, I say, you know what, these next year and a half, let's look it out, right? Whoever's ideas are better, that's what we vote for. But when the person is voted for and we're at the Democratic National Convention, we got to be together. We band yeah. together. The common yeah. enemy is in the White, House. In the White House. I don't want to hear, oh, I'm going to protest vote. No, 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 no. Because if you don't, you're going to get another four years of them. Yeah. But that's the problem, that Unfortunately, that position is no longer about helping the country. It's like a badge that you wear on yourself because it's a <coughs> position of honor and power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The power that you gain from that position is like ridic yeah. it's ridiculous, yeah. right? So people, if they don't get the power that they want, they mm -hmm. completely they disregard the movement. Mm -hmm. They no longer want to help, and that's mm -hmm. I feel like what happened with Bernie. That's what like happened. he mm -hmm. never said it, right? He never said turn away from Hillary. But why did all his supporters do that? Oh yeah, yep. He did not help. He did not help because he was salty because he lost. Yeah. He was salty because he lost. And, and and I get it. You get so close to to that power and you lose it. I still can't believe he's running again. First of all, sorry, you're 100 years old, first of all. Yeah, um, I can't. Like, I, I can't deal with it. I don't feel comfortable with someone of that age in office. And he's been around since the 60s. The 60s. Like, what's his track record? Well, because you know you've been around for 50 plus years. Right. But you know what? The, the, the thing about it is another issue with Bernie is that he controlled. He, uh, likes guns. He's a big yeah. gun yeah. advocate. And I don't know how I feel about that. Right? That's <laughs> another thing I don't like about him. Right? I can't vote for you and you're voting in favor NRA. of NRA pass laws. Right? Yeah. That's not like a thing. We all know NRA is evil. Yeah. Right? And I mean, listen, if a uh, twenty thousand black men want to apply for guns, ooh, there'll be issues, yeah. right? But the NRA for me was created to make sure black and brown people do not get guns, mm -hmm. right? The laws that they pass, right? Are in favor are in of... Fav right. I mean, stand, Trayvon, stand, stand your ground, mm -hmm. right? Freaking if, Florida. If you feel in fear of your... Like, yo, what? Really? But then when a black person in Florida, right, this one lady shot her gun in the air to get away from her abusive husband, right? She claimed stand your ground. She's in jail for 20 years. What? Yeah, it's such a double standard. What? Yeah, uh, 
This whole country is a double standard. I hate it. I kind of want to move, but I live here. Kinda. You don't have to stay here. <laughs> you know what? You don't I don't know, here. man. You know what? I, I, someone, oh, I forgot who it was, but I'll take credit for this quote because I love it. I know someone else said it. It's like, for me, I love this country. I just want this country to love me back. Right? It's never going to yeah. love you, sir. It could. No. Maybe Never. just a little bit. No, it, it was built. It wasn't built. No, it's not for you, right? It was right, built right, right. by your ancestors. He wasn't, wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't ready. It was built by your ancestors, mm-hmm. but it wasn't built for you. Sorry. Right. Uh-huh. And Malcolm X said it in the sixties. Yeah, this I think is it was in nineteen sixty four. He mm-hmm. said he was like, "I'm not an American. I'm yeah. not an American yeah, because yeah, this yeah. country doesn't represent me." Mm-hmm. The powers that this country gives to its citizens don't apply no, to African Americans. None of that was written for black people. It's not people. for us. Not for us. But I will say this. I will say this. Thing, things are better, right, than it How? was before. Then so when? I'm not in change. That's you good. are still in change. I mean, you just not can't see them. Physical <laughs> change. But which is right? worse, man? You said what now? Which is worse? Actually, I no, mean, it's worse listen. now. I'm going to tell you why. It's worse now why because during slavery, they had hope. They had hope of what the future would bring. And they didn't know. They didn't know. Right. They didn't but know now any better. They, right. You're free, quote unquote. You're free to get an education. You're free to do whatever the hell you want to do. However, you're still in bondage. So what do you look forward to in this country? Yeah, what do you aspire to in this country that is never going to be an advocate for you? Can I put back on the slave? <laughs> slavery was better part? I just, I, I not, not that slavery was better, but I'm saying they had yeah, hope. Up. They had hope that one day they were going to be equal. They were going to be free. They were going to have rights. They, do you understand what I'm saying? We are the, who's it, Maya Angelou, who said we're the hope and the dream of the slave. I mean, but sure. we're still in a nightmare. I mean, yes, we are. The still American in a nightmare. nightmare. This we're, is an American nightmare. We, we are still a nightmare. But, but, I got uh, called a nigger one week ago in 2019. I have three master's I mean, degrees. I mean, but, you know, Sir. I'm saying it's, Again, I'm not defending America, right? What I'm saying, what I'm defending is that things are better. We have a long way to go, right? But yes, you got called the N-word, it's like that, right? But think about it, right? How many white folks that you met call you N-word and you see them calling the N-word in their, in their eye, right? How yeah. many times have you seen that, okay? Yeah. Secondly, <laughs> at least we're not living in a time period of our grandparents or sometimes parents, right, if they're old enough, where you see a white person walking down the road or the street and you have to step out their way. Right, you have to call them sir or miss, uh, Mister, Miss, or whatever, and they call you boy, girl, so on and so forth. Right. So again, my mm. thing is, it is better for us. We have more rights, so on and so forth. We can fight back more, right? But it's still horrible, right? Yeah. It's still horrible. We have a long way to go, and for me, I'm just hoping that my children don't experience the same. Uh, type of racism that I have had to experience in my lifetime. And that's what our the generation before us was saying about us. Mm-hmm. And the generation before them was saying about them. Yeah. And it wasn't that long you know? ago. Like I was just telling my students, my mom drank mm-hmm. from a colored only water fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Went to a colored only schoolhouse in right. Kentucky. Had my boyfriend's aunts and uncles went Kentucky, to right? the colored school in yeah, Kentucky. My yeah. mom. Yeah, that so was one dad. generation mm-hmm. ago. It so I think it's I think ago. it's worse in the sense that Slaves only had one experience. They Thank didn't you. know any better. The expectations weren't. They didn't have anything in their mind that like they thought would be better for us. We already know what life is capable of giving us, mm-hmm. but we're also so oppressed at the same time. So I think in that regard, it's like, damn, if we have all these rights and benefits mm-hmm. that we deserve to have as American citizens, why is it that like our people are still getting shot? and? Well, we're still discriminated against in the workplace. And I was just about to say, going on a job interview, it's all good, you know, when you're on the phone, but then when you walk in and they see mm-hmm. black and brown well, positions filled. My all thing of a for, you know, anyone that's racist that, yo, you don't like this country, you can leave. Well, guess what? I ain't leaving. You got to <laughs> deal with me. I'm here. We I'm just got to wait another 25 years <laughs> until we become the majority, <laughs> and then let's see what it's, let's okay. see what everything turns into. Well, that's oppressive. I don't know like what y'all going to do. Wow. My daddy's <laughs> in Africa. I, I got a place to stay. I don't know where y'all going to go. Uh, <laughs> no, I, th- I think I'm going to stay 25 years. I'm going to submit. All right. <laughs> we are going to take another quick commercial break. We'll be right back at the final session. <laughs> I'm going to stay with my dad. I don't know where y'all going to go. I'm going to add a little bit. Call me when you need me. Oh, baby. Call me when you need me. Give me a call. 
Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. When you want me, I got you. When you need me, I'm in round boo. Take it easy till I slide through. Let me examine you. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a shot. I call it hard candy. You don't like it a lot. Seven girl leaving up on the weekends. 365 days out of the year. Listen, so just give me a call. I'll be the doctor. Call me when you need me. I'm ready. 24/7 girl leaving up on the weekends. 365 days out of the year. Listen, so just give me a call. When you don't think you can make it, got the shakes just so hot you can't take it. Want it so bad you can taste it. Tell you what to do You can go and call me up I'm gonna give you a shot You know I got that candy Girl, you like it a lot It goes right to your spot Keeps you honey and hot You look the lollipop The way I like it, girl I'll be your doctor Call me when you need me I'm ready 24-7 Girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year And this, so just give me a call I'll be your doctor Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year, I'm there, so just give me a call I'll be a doctor Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year, I'm there, so just give me a call I'll be a doctor Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year, I'm there, so just give me a call I got prescriptions and medicine that cure everything As soon as I get the kissing and licking around your belly ring right home Baby, just wrap everything, let it fall below your knees So you can breathe, now please prepare for surgery We do the 69, defying gravity Call me that turn and turning and twisting inside your cavity My love and potency fluid in every language emergencies Hit me with urgency Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year, I'm so just give me a call I'll be your doctor Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year, I'm so just give me a call I'll be your doctor Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends 365 days out of the year, I'm there, so just give me a call, I'll be your doctor. Call me when you need me, I'm ready 24-7, girl, leaving up on the weekends. 365 days out of the year, I'm there, so just give me a call, give me a call, give me a call, give me a call, give me a call. <laughs> yeah, uh, nurse, would you kindly take the patient into the operating room and uh, help her get undressed, and then uh, she can help you get undressed. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> we can start operating. Yeah. Call me when you need me. Just call me. Call me when you need me. Just call. Call me when you need me, just call me, give me a call comment section we are almost out of time but we're talking about all of this these layers and levels to this discrimination and it's, it's making me want to know what can I do to protect myself what can we do to protect ourselves and to not be so affected because I feel like I'm turning into like this bitter 
jaded skeleton of Shirley, and I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be holding my book back and my coat like somebody's going to take something from me all the time. So what can we do? What can I do <laughs> to, like, not be bothered, to be unbothered, as the kids say? What can I do, Matt? I don't know. You don't have an answer I'm to this? You have the answer to everything else, but you don't have the answer to this? Uh, I, as, as James Baldwin says, uh, to be, you know, what is the quote? To be awake in America or be a black man or black <laughs> woman in America and be semi-awake is to be upset all the all time. The time. Yeah. So you got to turn a blind eye. You have to turn a blind eye because the more you know, the angrier you become. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance yeah. is truly bliss. And I look at my students sometimes and I feel so sorry for them because mm -hmm. they know so little about so much that it's scary. And they have no idea what is really going to be awaiting them when they get out mm -hmm. of those doors. Yeah. You know, so. I think that's my biggest concern <laughs> with education is like, I know so much, you guys know so much because mm -hmm. you've been out there in the world as black and brown people, we experience it and we know what to expect on a daily basis, but our kids are completely ignorant to that. Their parents a lot of times don't know any better. So it's like, how do we inform them without making them also like resent and become mm -hmm. bitter? Right. And then, so Amanda, you looked up a story earlier while we were on uh, break about having guns in the classroom, right? Yeah. Having these kids in the classroom, <laughs> them, you know, not knowing anything about the world. Why would, what state was it again? Florida. Florida. So they just Good. approved a bill that was signed by the Senate and is going to the governor mm -hmm. where they will allow the districts to decide if they are going to allow teachers to be armed in the classroom. Mm. You mm. <laughs> Here's a crazy thing, right? The last, the, not the last recent, but the major school shooting last year was at Marjorie Stillman Douglas, Stoneman, Stoneman Douglas, Douglas, Douglas in High Florida, School right? In Florida. Now, see, here's the thing. The NRA always says that a good guy with a gun would stop a bad guy with a gun. Okay. What <laughs> people don't know is that Marjorie, the high school, had two armed security guards. Wow. Right? <coughs> had guns. And they caught one of the security He's a cop, actually. Right? Caught one of the cops on tape. He hears the round Did he off. run away? He did not even go in. He has a gun. Oh, but... Good guy with a gun, stop wow. the bad guy with a gun, right? They were, I didn't know that. listen, oh, yeah, yeah, they fired him, of course, right? Because you didn't do your job, you didn't defend your children, right? But my thing is, just because you have a gun does not mean you yeah. have the bravery to use it to not only defend yourself, but defend other, te uh, other yeah. people. Yeah. And if you're a teacher, some people don't understand teacher life, right? Yeah. You don't understand. It's just you and them kids <laughs> in that room. <laughs> And you want me to have a what? A what? A gun <laughs> on me? For? Listen. For what? That's a bad Yeah, idea. I don't think that'll fly in New York. <laughs> I don't think that'll fly in New York. No. I, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't think. I personally <laughs> wouldn't. Like, I, I've shot a rifle before, <laughs> and that experience mm -hmm. was very traumatic for me. I was 14 years old, mm -hmm. and I imagine that it'll still be traumatic. I don't want a damn gun. I want more pay. I want... Less work, and less hours. That's what I want. And how about this? How about this, right? Instead of giving teachers guns, right, to protect the children and so on and so forth, how about maybe we pass some laws to make sure people that are crazy don't get guns. We make it harder for people to get guns. They're well, so accessible. Background checks, Actually, so on and so forth. to become a teacher now in New York City, I can't mm -hmm. speak for other states, you have to do a mental health um, test. Have like to a pass. background check? No, yes. it's deeper than a background check. You have to do a, a mental right. competency test Absolutely. now. Because a lot of these teachers are crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. not being facetious. They're crazy. Yeah. I work and with some that are not right. Yeah. And they do not need to be teaching children. And the kids are crazy. I mean, but it's not their fault. The, the kids. <laughs> but kids how do we go from gun? Like, why can't we just go back to, like, like I think the we need to get corporal punishment where I can, like, beat your child and paddle them? Because I know we were paddled when I was in, yeah, in school. Yeah. We didn't have any of these problems. Because we didn't want to be paddled. We didn't want to be hit by our teacher. We're such a sensitive society now. Can we go back to that? Reverse everything, the corporal punishment? Everything mm. is so PC. You Why y'all reversing? Like you parents know? get so punished. Like they'll call ACS on you. You, you know what? I think. Can we yeah, go back? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of it is the parents. I think especially lack thereof. Today, <laughs> the schools are seen as an avenue for kids to be raised. Mm -hmm. At home is where the, school, the kids should be being yeah. raised by their parents. And school is where we're finding them. We're teaching them right. uh, information that they should know about the world. But we can't raise the kids. I can't do no, everything. No, we're doing both. It's, we're doing both, it's, yeah. It's, it's, we can't do it's everything. Getting, it's getting crazy. But again, we're doing you want to introduce a gun into a classroom with uh, 
kids that their homeworks are going. And listen, again, you guys have not seen what we've seen, what a teacher sees you in don't a know classroom. About these teacher streets. You haven't mm-hmm. seen a classroom in chaos where you're the only teacher in there, <laughs> and you have to like, like, like get that whole class like together, right? And imagine <laughs> if you are a teacher that's unwell, that's nervous, and you know, anxiety. You, you got anxiety. Have you your own issues you. at home. What's gonna happen? Sleep you know, blood deprived. Blood blood. If a kid comes up on you, <laughs> and yeah, a kid comes up on you and surprises you, you wanna pull your gun and shoot him? Because that's what happened with like the first month. And I guarantee it, it'll be yeah. a black child. It's gonna be black child. children. Of course it will. Yeah. It's gonna be a, uh, a white, white teacher, teacher or something like that mm-hmm. that never seen black people before. But yeah. so I'm gonna come to the neighborhood yeah. and teach them and all the other yeah. stuff. But in reality, you're only there for a check, and you're scared of them. Yeah. What happens then? Yeah. I just think we need to get rid of guns altogether. I think it was Australia that like 15, 20 years ago passed some sort of like law where mm-hmm. they banned automatic rifles and weapons that the public shouldn't have. Yeah. Right. And their like crime went it's down. It's like one of the, the most. No more gun violence. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here, here's my thing. I don't think we should get rid of like guns per se. I mean, like I said, I'm a cop, you know, I'm a government hawk and I've seen read about Governments turn it on the people. You know, that's what Hitler did with the Jews. Hey, let me take your guns first. You can't defend yourself. Then I'm going to come in and move you out, put you in the ghetto, and then I'm going to move you to the concentration. So, I mean, mm. I'm dragging it, <laughs> right? Yeah. What I'm saying is a stretch. responsible <laughs> gun ownership can be a thing, right? But we got to take it out of criminals' hands. We have to stop making it so easy for people with, people with mental health issues yeah. to get a gun. Yeah. There's no reason why that should happen. There should be background checks. You should be able to go to classes. In, uh, in a lot of countries in in Europe and so on and so forth, oh, Japan, right? People have guns in Japan. How many people get killed in Japan a year? Not yeah. a lot. I think not more than ten, right? They have responsible gun ownership where you have to have your gun in one place in the apartment or the house yeah. and your bullet somewhere else. Like we can be responsible, right? We just to put it in responsible. I don't know that that, that is. Happened. I don't know that that's an American like thing to ever manifest itself. America is such a dirty place. Mm-hmm. That will never happen. Mm-hmm. We're not responsible as a country. Well, listen, like I said, if, if a million black men, a million black and brown men went and said, you know what, I want a gun to defend myself, oh, the, those laws would be changed real quick. Of course. Yeah. Real quick. And Maybe that's what happened with the Black Panthers in California because they were allowed. Mm-hmm. They were allowed to carry. Allowed. Right. And when they realized that these black people are protecting their neighborhoods and they're fighting back against this police brutality, mm-hmm. then they want to pass a law that yeah. bans people from yeah. carrying weapons. Yep. They went up to the California State House. I think of Ronald course. Reagan was governor then. Yeah. And it was legal for them to have shotguns and handguns. Yeah. And he saw that. He was like, oh, no. Yeah. Hell no. We don't want these that. black people carrying weapons. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Where was the NRA You know, then? Fernando Castile. Where were you then? Yeah. He got shot and killed in his, in his <laughs> car with his wife and, and daughter. daughter. And then what happened to that police officer? Anyone know? Nothing. He's still working. Yeah. yeah, he is. And I wasn't he like recently in the news. Who the police officer? The police officer. I think that Probably. he w- like he went to trial or whatever, and mm. they let him go like scot free. Mm. <sighs> no probation. He just free of charge. Of course, Black lives don't matter. Right. No, they don't. But it's all it's all in our head. Don't you guys see that? What? It's all in America's our head. Great. It's all in your head. You are seeing <laughs> these things. Unbelievable. All this country has given for us. Yeah. I you guys speak out against this. Oh! <laughs> 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 this is the old Hitler. Oh, Hitler fight. <laughs> I can't. This is depressing. Oh, my I God. Know. I'm walking out of here sad. I'm going to smack every white person I see, and that's not good. Imagine. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to be sad. You know what I'm going to do when I get what? up? Don't watch Game of Thrones. Cinco de Mayo. Oh, Cinco de Mayo, guys. We f- completely I'm gonna take some forgot. Shots. We're going to take some shots, and we're going to lighten up the mood a little bit. Right. I'm going to go and try to watch past episodes of Game of Thrones. Right. And Game, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Since it is Cinco de Mayo, <laughs> hey, Game listen. Game of Thrones. If you voted for Trump and you're racist, you cannot You're not allowed to celebrate. You can't participate, you can't participate. No. Can't partic- no. You can't. You cannot do that. Not for you. Okay. Just make sure. Those are the rules. It's not for you. Great. Not for you. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What to, I don't know how to go forward. What do we do? What do we do? The moral of the story is, live your life one day at a time. <laughs> live your life one day at a time. One day at a time. Mm-hmm. Keep hope alive. I don't right. know. Listen. All right now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep hope alive. 
I think my, my <laughs> advice for people would be to stay woke, read, be informed. But do we want to read and stay woke, though? Because that's making us more depressed. I mean... Ignorance is bliss, remember? I mean, sure, but then you get something off us. Yeah, this at least we're true. more informed. And you get monkeys on your May- shirt. Maybe we do need to get angry. I No, I not maybe us, the youth. I'm telling you, the kids need to get yeah, angry. They need to get most angry. Most of these movements were led by children. Mm-hmm. Civil rights movement. These were mm-hmm. kids and, and they were kids. students yep. that were angry, that were woke, and they led these protests initially. But they, got, they, they, they got time. There, there is... There is they uh, can't read, Matt. They, but at least we're there guiding them. You know what I mean? They don't even know how to Google. Like, how, like do you, how do you have your phone and you're taking a test and you still get the answer wrong? Please explain to me how that happened. Because I had it happen. I'm going to say all of them. <laughs> I said there are hope for them. And, and you know, listen, there, there, there have been people that couldn't read and, and, and go on do. They did some the things. Douglas, so they did some right. things. Yeah, they did. But we're there. We're there to teach them. So on that note, sure. On that note, we are out of time. And we have had fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to have some more <laughs> fun at the bar mm-hmm. celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Um, please don't forget to follow us on Instagram at NY Comment Section. You can follow us on Facebook at the Comment Section. Um, anything else? Shout out to the, to, to the LDM Network. Please. Shout out to LDM. What? LDM is working really really Real hard, hard. and we appreciate the LDM network mm-hmm. so love so appreciate it. Mm-hmm. and we look forward to doing our future shows before we go I wanted to congrat Matt on receiving tenure finally with the New York City Department of Education he is Good a tenured job, educator out here which is hard to come they by they can't today. tell you nothing they can't, can't tell, tell you nothing, nothing. <laughs> wait till I get my money right just like right. Kanye for right. real so we oh, are. Oh, oh, Kanye. How is Dropout Kanye? Right. How is Dropout Kanye? Favorite movie, Warrior. Warrior. Now that I'm familiar with. That's I know right. the Warriors. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great week, and we will see you next week on the Bye. God bless my haters. God bless fake hoes. God bless these haters. Cause God only knows that. All I do is get it. All I, all I.